All right, listen, man, Free Players TV. I'm back again. It's T's outside the Emirates. It finished Arsenal 2, Liverpool 2. I'm here with Jason. How do you sum up that game, bro? Kind of frustrating, really. I think when I looked at the when I looked at the lineup before the game, um, I saw Partey at right back, and I thought it's a bit of a it's a, it's a bit of a tough one, really, because I, I didn't feel like his hamstrings had enough to be spend 90 minutes trying to chase their trying to chase their winger. But first five six minutes, they tried to put that diagonal over him and and, and get Diaz one v one, and he dealt with it every single time. Um, and I think they even had to try and change tact a little bit. And then also he was uh, on the ball. He was able to kind of control. Diaz couldn't kind of live with him. He was inverting into the midfield. Um, really helped us get a, get a really dominant footing in the game. I think in the first half we were dominant. We played the game in their half. Uh, they couldn't really get near us. I don't think they looked threatening. I don't think they looked. I wasn't particularly concerned. We get the goal nice and early. Um, I, all, I mean Ben White. I, when we, when we knew, yeah, when, so when we knew that Saliba wasn't going to be in, we were all a bit concerned. Oh and yeah, I, think I was, I was I think especially. That the, I think that the biggest, I that. think that the biggest compliment that I can pay Ben White today is that no one's talking about Saliba after the game. I yeah, think after the game, everybody. Every, after, well the game, said, after the game, after the game, everybody. Oh, before the game, everyone was like, "No Saliba." How are yeah. they going to go? How are they going to go? Yeah. And the fact that no one's talking about Saliba after the after the game tells me exactly how how, how well Ben White did. For me, we were singing out his name. <laughs> I was, for me, I was, we'll looking, I was looking at Moreno, I was looking at Trossard and I was looking at Martinelli saying I want a big game from all three of yeah. you. I got it from Moreno. Defensive. Well, I, got not from, even, I got it I got yeah. it from him. Yeah. Trossard was okay and he Martinelli was, okay. was not on, his, let's, not his, Please, let's talk was, about Martinelli was, tonight. Look, Martinelli was not his level. I'm not going to sit here and criticise him because I think when you're playing in that sort of role, it's a, it's a confidence thing. I think the Bournemouth... The Bournemouth okay. situation last week. That's is probably, interesting. Look, I think wingers. That's very are, constructive, actually, because wingers, a lot of people are just. No, I'm they're not just gonna, gunning him. No, they're no, just gunning no, him, gunning no, him, no, gunning him. No, 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 no. My no. thing is, it's just the final third, just that, uh, yes. the crucial moments, yes. Yes. the key moments. Yes. The, this is where his, his decision making is not look, quite there. He's not thinking I ahead. I think that. He's not quite sharp. Well, I think. So, so, so I think. So the, the way that I would flip it is that when wingers or forward players are at their best, it's instinctive. So they're not thinking. So they're in that moment, and they, 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 the decision's already made. They've done everything they need to do. So you think about Henri, for example. Henri doesn't have to get the ball, get it out of his feet, open his body up, and do everything. As the ball's coming over, he's doing all the stuff. He's aligning it. So as just the ball comes, mm. he's then just got to do, got, got to do that final pass. He hasn't got to do all three bit, all three bits at once. And I think the Martinelli maybe just doesn't have that, like that, the confidence to kind of just trust himself in the, in, in those, like. If Trossard picks up the ball, Trossard doesn't think he's going to lose the ball. So he's playing with the confidence that he knows I can get on the ball, I can jink, I can turn, I can do X, Y, and Z. The ball, they're not going to get the ball off me. Declan Rice picks the ball up, goes on a, goes on a run. He's confident that he's not going to, you know, pass eight, opens up, gets the ball, plays it. But these players are able to play with the confidence because they're not worried about it. And I think, I think he's got a bit of a, it feel, felt to me like he's got a bit of a hangover from the Bournemouth game. Where that opportunity happened, and it, you know it's a big one. Um, you, you don't put it away. They got the other end within 90 seconds, and and and, and they're one up. Mm. Today, exactly the same sort of situation. We're in, we're, we're in the ascendancy. He's got the ball, looking to attack. We lose it. A mistake's made. Lose it. Got mm. the other end. Night again. And it wasn't a game that I was looking at going, Liverpool should be in this game. Right. Like, don't get me, I think they, uh, they had a Well, we, we saw after the first half, well, I would say after the first half, I, I would like to think Arsenal fans went into the interval very confident about the second half. I did, I was not, I was not remote. I knew that they had to come out and be better because they couldn't be, because they couldn't be any worse. I knew that they had to be moments. But then what I also knew is that it was in our, it, it was in our own hands. Oh yeah, and yeah, that, and, and that's kind of the concern because again, away at the Etihad, in yeah. our own hands, don't do it. But you know, but the other issue is, like I said, officiating. The officiating. Look, I mean, look at that that, that VAR decision. I think that was a that was a disgrace. Yeah. I literally walked up the stairs, saw it on the screen, and you can see the two guys in, in that when, little box looking, and we're like, "What the hell are you looking at?" You when, can blatantly yeah. see that oh, uh, the, uh, that the, Van Dyke. Yeah, we're talking about Van Dyke oh, being uh, level. Oh yeah. On, on the, 
the, the, for, the for, you know, for the second goal. The challenge, the, goal. the challenge that we, the challenge that you have, and I've always said this. The challenge that you have. That was that absolutely when you disgraceful. Are, I'm sorry, the officiating in the Premier League. You need to sweat <laughs> out. That was a disgrace. When you are in the stadium, your experience of those things is is, is horrendous because you don't know what's going on. But when it just makes you think it's been going on throughout the whole season yeah. so far. No, I know the whole but, campaign with and, the no, Declan Rice situation. We can go on no, and yeah, on and no, on. Look, we can. It. I mean, if we take today, if we take today as an example, it's it's a poor experience for the match day for the match going match day going fans where I know that if I was at home on Sky Sports I would have a much clearer understanding of everything that was happening because I could see the whole and I understand why they don't shout on the big screen because you're starting to um, uh, you're starting to affect the officials and stuff because they can they can see it they can't just close their eyes they can hear the crowd like, yeah the crowd exactly I, I, that's I, probably so why they it makes sense now I can absolutely <laughs> understand why they yeah. don't do it right but you know but then, but then almost in some respects you think if I think about Wimbledon so like when there's a line call when there's a line right. call when there's a line call at Wimbledon like, like well, you, they're, you they're know the crowd you're all having strawberries all, and cream all, and, and, no, and prawn sandwiches, sandwiches they so are, they are, it's not gonna but <laughs> as the ball's coming over <laughs> and, it down on, and it bounces on the line you get yeah. you get that sense of urgency from the, oh yeah you can almost build a bit of a spectacle but, but, but it's all, it's all, it's all friendly but fundamentally I was I was less concerned about that. I mean, like I said, I've always had a, I've always had, I've got a view about the match day experience of a fan who pays to come to the stadium and doesn't get to see those things and doesn't know what's going on. They're just they're just left waiting and spewing for two minutes, three minutes, four minutes sometimes. I was more concerned about the disallowed goal, um, and I can't even call it a disallowed goal because the referee's blown before. The balls any before the ball's gone in the net. But if you go back and watch it and look at the timing, Kivior's won the header. Nothing. He hasn't. He hasn't waved advantage. He hasn't done anything. The ball drops into the box. Havertz makes a flick. Then he blows and uh, and, and signals a free kick. Half a second later, the ball's in the back of the net, and it can't be looked at by VAR because. Because because the, the 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 whistle's gone before the ball goes That's in there, it. It. and it's the same referee that if you remember a couple of seasons uh, a couple of seasons ago blew early when Man City and Tottenham had a situation yeah, right, right at the end of the yeah, game, yeah, yeah. and there was a break where he blew to give a. To get to, to, to give a free kick, that's and it, he yeah. should have let it and play, he yeah, and, had right. he, and had he let it yeah. play, there was you know there was an advantage to be played there. So you've got a referee who has a tendency to blow early. <laughs> <laughs> um, when, which is ridiculous because you have VAR to help you with those decisions, um, and it was it was never a foul. It was never, never ever ever yeah, a foul. A foul. You're, anyone that's played football it, as a centre half, you have to you have to go and challenge for that ball. He won that's it cleanly. It. The, the, the the player wasn't on the floor complaining. No one was complaining. Liverpool defended the the, the next phase. The ball goes into the back of the net. Referee blows, and everyone's like, "What's he blown for?" Yeah. It doesn't make any sense. All right, Jason, and final question. Uh, are Arsenal still in contention? Yes. Yes, and yes, right. and yes, and the reason I say yes, just, just very quickly, is Man City. If I look at since they've lost Rodri, they drew with us. Mm. Um, they've played uh, Fulham, Wolves, and Southampton. Mm. Won each of those goal games by one goal. Mm. Now, if I said to you last season, Southampton. Wolves, Fulham mm. are playing Man City. How many goals do you think Man City are going to score? And yeah. how many points do you think they're going to take? Yeah. You're probably going to say, I think they're going to take all nine points. And I imagine that they're probably going to come out with a 10, 12, 13, yeah. 15 goal difference. And they're not. They're not flying. Yeah. The Liverpool side that came here today, if people are talking about them as title contenders and not talking about us as title contenders. There you go. You've got to ask yourself why. Thank you, Jason. Yes. There you go. Leave your comments, please, if you agree with anything what Jason said tonight. Leave your comments there. If you don't, if you disagree, do the same. We'll read them out and then, yeah, we'll get back to you on that. Listen, big up. Thank you, Jay. Cheers. Three Points TV. Like, share, and subscribe to the thing. We love you. Peace out. Thank you.